So who here has heard of swordfish? All right, I got one, two, got a couple, got a couple, all right, that's good. Who here has heard of SMIS? All right, I got a couple still, okay. Um, so there was an old protocol that uh, used to manage all storage called SMIS, which is based on SIMXML, and the problem was it was very onerous to implement. It was downright huge, because it was based on SIMXML, you had to run a full database. We're gonna talk specifically about the swordfish approach. So we wanted to develop a model that would cover block file and object, and we want to be able to cover traditional storage, domain, you know, we want to be able to cover domains, we want to be able to cover uh, fault, uh, uh, different fault domains, we want to be able to cover entire fabrics, but we also want to use all the new technology, which is things like REST API. So uh, if you're in um, Michael Oros' presentation earlier, we talked about the fact that we have been leveraging a lot of work with DMTF. Well, we got in bed with DMTF probably 25 years ago when they actually developed a standard called SIMXML, or SIM. And the SIM standard was actually used to be the basis for SMIS. Well, that's been 25 years now, and it's, it's, it's served us very, very well, and a lot of people have used it. But the problem is, modern programmers don't use SIM. Modern programmers don't use that kind of language anymore. Modern programmers like REST API, they like SOAP, they like things like that, that are much easier to program, and much less stateful. So this new extension is all gonna be based on REST, it's all HTTPS over JSON, um, and it's all based on the DMTF Redfish design, and we're gonna extend that. So this is a little graph showing all the companies that are participating. You'll see on the left um, all the companies that work with Redfish. Redfish has been highly successful in the server world, and it replaces IPMI. IPMI, as a protocol, is not secure. There's a whole bunch of flaws with it, and vendors have been trying to push people off of IP, uh, IPMI for a long time now. In fact, you're not going to see things like NVMe uh, coming out in IPMI because vendors are really trying to get people to stop using it. It's just not a good thing. DM, uh, DMTF has come out with Redfish. It's been out for years now, and all the major storage vendors have been using it. Use Redfish whenever you can. It's the secure method to do baseboard management. And who here knows about baseboard management? So you have a, a, either a, a Dell has a DRAC card, an HP has an ILO card, uh, all the different server vendors have their own name, but it's basically a little Ethernet port on its own that has its own processor that's separate from the system that lets you manage it. It lets you do uh, KVM redirection. It lets you do virtual CDs and virtual uh, uh, USB sticks. It lets you really control the system and do all the BIOS settings. We're doing the same thing with Swordfish. Swordfish is an extension of Redfish, and it's nothing more. It's just a few extra folders. And you can see we've actually got a number of companies that have actually been working with, with uh, Swordfish as well. And we're gonna go into deep what Swordfish really is. So let's walk the model. There's a technical, now obviously you can go to the spec and start looking at that, but if you really wanna see what it looks like right now on a real system, you can actually go to swordfishmockups.com. And if you put slash redfish slash v1 after it, you'll actually bring up the JSON directly in Chrome, in your Chrome browser. And I recommend Chrome highly because Chrome will take the raw JSON output that's sent to your browser and actually prettify it for you. It'll actually make it, make it human readable. So you can see what this thing actually looks like. And these mockups are representations. They're not actual implementations, but you can see exactly what the normative language looks like. So here's an uh, overview of what it looks like. If you look at Swordfish, you basically model, right, you, you go right to the mockup site. You, this, this is kind of what it looks like. And again, there's a few things that we've, we've outlined here. We've got a simple array. We've got a complex array. We've got one called ISC. Um, and we've got some file servers. We have some block servers. Um, and I'll show you what these look like, but you can see that all of these, like storage systems, storage services, chassis, uh, tasks, all of these little folders here let you dig deeper and deeper and deeper into the system, and everything goes uh, in hyperlinks to other things as well. So for instance, if I care about storage services, you'll see that if I go into storage services, and you see all I do is go to swordfishmockups.com slash redfish slash v1 slash storage services, I get a list of all the storage services this is hosting right now, and I've got three. I've got one called one, another one called file server, and another one called simple one. So all you have to do to actually start interrogating system one is to go into the, to add a slash one to the end. So you simply follow the link. And again, if I wanna do block, I'm generally gonna care about things like classes of service, I'm gonna care about volumes, I'm gonna care about pools, I'm gonna care about groups, endpoints, things like that. So it's actually very easy readable. You can see under here, I go to storage services and I click on one and I can see 
that under array number one, I've got storage pools, I've got volumes, I've got, compl you know, I've got other systems as well, but if to look at the pools under system one, I just put in that path at the end of my uh, IP address, and it gets me right to pools. And I could actually interrogate thing and actually discover everything about that. And for file, it's the exact same thing. The difference is I use pools and I use groups, um, but file systems, I don't necessarily deploy a volume, I deploy a file system. Um, and again, we're adding object as well. So there's a bunch of tools to make life really, really easy for you. And I know this looks like a lot, but it's really not. Let me explain. Swordfish has got two sides to it. So left and a right, as we say. One side is the consumers of Swordfish. Those are the people who want to read everything about your storage. They want to find out how many volumes you have. They want to find out how much storage you have. They want to find out how fast your fans are spinning. They want to find out how much power you're consuming. Those are your consumers. Then you have the providers. Now, everything in, in the side over here is consumers. Then you have the providers. The providers are the actual hardware vendors, the devices. And the devices say, I have this many hard drives, I have this many pools, I have this many volumes. So they're the person providing the information. Now we've got a bunch of options here. You can write your own management software, any language you want, which talks to any provider and actually interrogates it and pulls information. For instance, we had uh, a vendor out there go and write a um, Datadog implementation to pull information directly. So your implementation could actually take the Swordfish module and um, gather all the data from the array and actually and, and, and publish that however you want it. More, more important, importantly, if you want to see how a provider looks, we've actually written a PowerShell, PowerShell toolkit provider that is actually out on GitHub that we've actually made into a SNEA project. And that provider will actually let you run commands like get volume, get storage, get disk, get uh, chassis, and you can actually pull that information back directly as a PowerShell object. And by the way, that PowerShell module is written to run uh, PowerShell on Windows, PowerShell on Mac, and PowerShell on Linux. So there's a number of clients out there. You can also use a simple Chrome browser and actually use that as your client and actually interrogate things. So we've got a PowerShell client. We've got the Chrome client. We've got another client on the SNEA site that you can download for free. It's a web client. But we've also got a number of, of uh, providers, too. We have Swordfish mockups. And in fact, if you go to the DMTF site, there's a mockup creator, and if you want to do this, you can actually build your own mockup, put it on the mockup site, and actually normalize it there and have people vote and say, hey, we think you're in the spec or you're out of the spec to get your implementation perfect. You can also, we've created a Swordfish provider in PowerShell as well, and that will let you write your own code that will let you map your API directly to a Swordfish API and normalize it and put it right out as an actual usable product. There's also a Redfish server that we've written in Python that uses Flask. I don't know if you're familiar with Flask, uh, but Fla that lets you write um, your REST API to a Swordfish map example, and you can actually publish it this way. You can also download our emulator. Our emulator runs, uh, you can download the, that directly from uh, the uh, GitHub site as well. And you can also write your own out of whatever language you want and build your own provider that simply responds to REST calls. And I'll show you what some of these look like as well. And again, I'm moving kind of fast because these sessions are pretty short. So the open source project out there, Swordfish PowerShell Toolkit. So if you want to be able to say, get Swordfish Drive, get Swordfish Chassis, get Swordfish Volume, you can download it from that GitHub site right there. You can also um, run commands like this. Once you import the SNEA Swordfish module, you can connect to a target. Give it, in this case, I'm running a simulator. So you connect to a Swordfish target, which is local port 5000, and then it returns the object, which should look kind of like, kind of like that JSON code I was showing you a minute ago. And it returns back the object of all that information. And you can actually run other commands like get, get drive, get chassis. It knows how to follow those trees. Now I should note that the PowerShell toolkit also will connect to the mockup. So you can connect directly to the mockup and run the same exact commands. Now, additionally, in the PowerShell kit that I've written, you can say, put a variable and say, this is a command, get, get swordfish volume. But I only want the fourth volume. And then I want to take and I was, get my list of volumes and I want to filter by volumes and only grab one called volume five. I can also, also automatically only get the, vol, the, the, the fourth volume in the list and I can only get the status of it because I only want to return the status. Because when I say get volume and if I get a single volume, the data from that can be very large. In fact, that's the data from get one volume. Now you can see that that's JSON format, not PowerShell. PowerShell just formats things very flat. But if I want to put it back to JSON, 
All I have to do is run this command right here, which is get, get my volume, and then pipe to convert to JSON. And it puts it right back in JSON format for me. So in this case, you can see that there are a lot of settings here, like durable name format is NAA, durable name is this, uh, access capabilities, uh, read, write, um, block size, 512. You can see all this data gets filled in. So this is what a PowerShell return looks like when you do a get volume. And it's very easy to consume, and it should look the same on every single array in the world. Now, more importantly, every single PowerShell commandlet is written with help built into it. So we've written these things to all have self-help. All you have to do is do a get command on the module swordfish, and you get a list of every command we have. And then if you type get help, the command name, space examples, or space full, we'll show you full, full uh, help for that feature, as well as examples of how it looks when you actually run it. Um, you can also run a verbose mode. The verbose mode actually will tell you, it will show you all the interactions between your PowerShell command and the actual thing you're talking to. It'll show you the, I transmitted this to him, I transmitted, it transmitted this back. It'll actually show you all the race, raw JSON flowing back and forth. So this helps you develop your own, J, your own uh, Swordfish module. And in fact, this is kind of what the help looks like. And again, we have examples in full. These are the commands that exist already. So example, we have these right now, these are gonna be added. And the only thing that's kind of weird is that REST API uses CRUD, which is create, read, update, and deletes. So C-R-U-D. PowerShell uses get, uh, set, delete, or get, set, new, and remove. So the only difference is we change the verb. For instance, get swordfish drive is no different than read swordfish drive in a, in a, in a if, you're, if you're thinking REST API mentality. But again, all, all commands that are checked into the build are automatically, we make sure that all the full help is there, we make sure that it works on both local targets and on Swordfish mockups, and there's no DLLs, so it's all, it's all open source. Everything's human readable. And again, sort of, uh, PowerShell is just one way I did it. Who here uses Windows a lot? Nobody, okay, a lot of Linux I assume then. So uh, we also have Python classes out there, and we also have Golang support. Uh, for the Go language. In fact, they call that project Go Fish. Because what a great name, isn't it? Um, so again, to do a Swordfish implementation, what you're going to need, in this case, I'm showing you in PowerShell, but you could just as easily do this in Python, is you're going to need access to swordfish mockup swordfishmockups.com, and you're going to need an access to the Swordfish spec, and you're going to need access to your own API. And what you want to do is you want to expand what your API returns when you get a volume versus what the Swordfish spec expects when it has a volume. And you can look at the mockups to see what this kind of looks like. Now, the spec may give you a thousand lines of all the things that could possibly be in there, but you're not going to do that. You're going to do only the things that your API returns. You're not going to make things up. You're just going to return what your API returns. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to normalize things. Swordfish may expect to see the word on or off or adaptive read ahead is a certain way. It may want to see certain uh, normalized words whereas your IP API may return something different. So you'll need to check those. An example, uh, the nimble storage thing that I use uh, returned back normal if my adaptive read-ahead cache was turned on. So I'm going to return back, instead of returning back normal, I'm going to return back adaptive read-ahead cache or off. So I've normalized that data. Or, for instance, if uh, I return back 1,024 megabytes Swordfish wants it in bytes, so I just need to know to multiply by 1,024. Um, here's an example. This is what my API returns back from a device. This is how I'm going to insert that into a Swordfish volume. You can see some of these things are going to transfer directly over. But see here, it says, uh, what is that? Block size. Block underscore size, size is 4,096. 4, well, I'm going to transfer that over here, and that's going to be block size in block size bytes, no spaces, no underscores, and I need to put it in, uh, uh, put my 4096 here. So I'm going to change some of the words of the API. It's basically an API conversion. It's not a full rewrite. That's the key, is everything in Swordfish you want to keep as stateless as possible. There should be very little that needs state. You're basically just going to take in your API and spit out the Swordfish API. It's just a conversion. Other things, um, when they don't make sense, are going to be hard-coded. For instance, uh, my array only supports uh, triple parity. Doesn't support RAID 10, doesn't support RAID 5. Since I know it only supports triple parity and it only supports SAS, 
interfaces, then I can hard code those in instead of having to actually detect those from the array. Because the array doesn't return that information because it's hard coded into the, into the product. So some things can be hard coded, some things can be normalized, and some things can be passed through. But the point is, once you've written those little changes, life should get really simple. And you should be able to implement this entire model. This right here is an example of what that looks like. You'll notice everything in brown is hard coded. Everything here is directly filtered over from something else. And you'll see in other places, I'm multiplying. For instance, snapshot.size times 1024 is to normalize it to get into bytes value. So if you download that PowerShell toolkit, even if you're not a PowerShell guy, I'd recommend downloading and opening up and looking at it because it'll show you how the objects work. This right here is directly out of the toolkit, so you can actually see what you're expected to put this in and how it's supposed to look. You can also go to Swordfish mockups to see, to see what an actual volume looks like. And again, your volumes will point to the pools that they're a member of. The pools will point to the drives that are a member of the pool. The RAID type will be defined in the storage pool. There's different places where things are set, but everything references something else. And again, you can do this in Python, you can do this in PowerShell, doesn't matter. Um, so here is an example. We also, instead of just writing a consumer, a Swordfish consumer, we actually wrote a Swordfish provider as well, totally in PowerShell. And it's all open source and it's all uh, downloadable and reusable by you in any way you want. So the idea is that the, the code you just saw is an example of how you could take a PowerShell toolkit or a uh, Python toolkit for your product, which points to your device, write an agent and actually build your own Swordfish provider. So again, it's all open source, it's all available for download, so we're trying to make it real easy for you guys to test your mockups. More importantly, I should point out, your mockups, you can, down, you can uh, give your mockups to the Twig, and you can go to the uh, GitHub for uh, storage, uh, Swordfish and actually upload your mockups there, and the entire group in the Twig can help you define what's in spec, what's out of spec, and help you define all of that. And more importantly, that becomes a mock-up example in the future for other people to see as well of how you can do certain things. So you can get your example out there while at the same time making sure you're protocol compliant. So again, running the listener is very easy. You just simply run the listener and you're off and running with a Swordfish provider on your server. Now you have the ability to make Swordfish requests and Swordfish serving from the same machine if you need to. But again, there are full instructions from both Python and from PowerShell to install a Swordfish provider and to be able to consume that for your machines on our GitHub site. So again, it's a GitHub, uh, uh, look for SNEA on GitHub and you'll find all of this to serve Swordfish. I don't know if that resonates with a lot of you guys. It's a cookbook. Um, so I should also point out that there's a lot of resources. If you go to uh, snea.org slash swordfish, you will find the specs, you'll find the user guides, you'll find the GitHub links, you'll find the practical guides, you'll find all the documentation, you'll find videos, you'll find um, the ISC and HSC configurations, which are very minimal and uh, hybrid configurations. You'll find block examples and file examples. Uh, you'll find white papers, um, and you'll be able to uh, interface with other people working on the spec. Um, and the best part is you can develop either a provider or a consumer of Swordfish and do really cool things. We got one guy who was like, well, you know, I want Swordfish to work with Kubernetes. I want Kubernetes, I want you to be able to, from Kubernetes, immediately pull a volume directly. So he wrote a library called Golang, which is, uh, or GoFish, which is all written in the Golang. We also have an Ember.js client. We've also got a uh, Power BI client and a Datadog client. I'm waiting for somebody to write a Grafana client um, so we can pull performance information from the uh, arrays on both power and, and performance directly from that array to be able to pump right into Grafana. Because the benefit is, once you write it for one in Swordfish, it should work on all arrays. You could actually graph all the arrays on a certain site using Grafana directly from this kind of interface. So we're always looking for feedback to change the spec as well. So for instance, some of the feedback recently that changed it is um, we had volume type where you set the RAID type, or we said, you know, we want to do RAID 5, RAID 10, whatever RAID level you want. But we want that, at one point it was, it was read only. Because once you create a volume of a certain RAID type, you couldn't change it. Vendor's like, no, 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 we have an option to change it. So we want that read write. We want to be able to change that to read write. Now, if your volume doesn't allow you to change RAID levels from RAID 5 to RAID 10, you don't have to support that feature, but 
having it read write means that if you do support read write on that feature, that you could actually implement it. So we're always looking for people who are doing different things to make sure the spec covers them. And the real call to, call to arms here is that we want you guys to be able to write your own Swordfish module for your own target device. And with everything we've got out there, we've tried to make it exceedingly simple to do. We've got a number of people on the Twig who will donate as many hours as you guys want to help you guys come up with your own providers. We've got a number of clients who are waiting for provi providers as well, like SolarWinds and ServiceNow um, and Turbodomic. And there's a number of clients out there looking to manage Swordfish-enabled storage. Also note, um, the most recent addition that we've been adding in is um, uh, NVMe, or NVMe, NVM support to Swordfish. So we're going to be able to manage, that's going to be a default way to manage uh, Swordfish. Our default way to manage NVM devices is going to be through Swordfish and Redfish. And the benefit, since Redfish covers servers and Swordfish covers storage, it doesn't matter where your NVM drives go, it'll still be covered. Thank you, guys.